to the question of alimony. So, Rai, somewhere in the title, could you put comment on alimony too? Uh, and that, uh, if, uh, I think we can make this into, we have to clip this whole part out. Now. Yeah, we should probably clip it if we can. Okay. Um, in the Quran, there are two references to al mata al mata al mata is any, it, it, it is the meaning of mata and the root of it relates to relaxation. And what it means legally is that the husband will ensure that his ex-wife is comfortable, okay? Not in need. Now, the, remember, the legal liability of the maintenance of a woman after the husband goes back to the father, if not the father, or her son first, if she has an older son. If not, then the father, then the other male relatives, then the khalifa, the sultan, the state. Uh, to, uh, and the bare minimum is that a woman should live at her level without working. Okay? Should not have to work. But the Quran puts, puts this, uh, has this concept of al mata. It is obligatory during the idda. Roof over her head, clothes on her back, and food in her mouth. Okay? It's obligatory in the idda. It is, in the Maliki Madhab, I spoke to some shiukh about this. Highly, highly recommended. Afterwards. During it, idda, obligatory. Afterwards, it's highly recommended. Some said for a year. Others said uh, provided she's weak because that ends up being sadaqah. Right? So it ends up being under the banner of sadaqah, essentially. I've had discussions with some people recently on the issue of the, the, the struggles of women who forego, forwent their ability to earn any money by stalling their careers because they had kids. And then something bad happens in the marriage and she's divorced with four kids or three kids or what have you. And they want alimony for that. Well, the first thing I would have to say is if we are recoursing to the Sharia, then we truly and honestly have to follow the Sharia in all matters. And that means once your sons, your boys, your males reach puberty, they're not your responsibility. They should go to the, the husband. So that unloads that responsibility. That's the first thing. We can't desire the Sharia in one realm. We want Sharia. But wait a second. When This is also Sharia. And it's for your benefit. You're unloading a financial burden. You're unloading an emotional burden. And let me just tell you straight, I don't believe that most women can raise a boy. Because you don't know, you've never been a boy. I mean, it's very logical. It's very logical and objective. You can't raise a teenage son, okay? Because you have never been a teenager. You don't know, like, where is the realm of this kid is just being a kid? Or, I had a mother. She said to me, I need you to talk to my son. His heart is black. I said, why is his heart black? He's into the satanic music or something? She said that she went out, listen to this, her, the grandma and the daughter and the son. One boy, one like 14-year-old boy, his little sister, his mom, his grandma. They went out and did shopping in New York. And the kid was so like bothering his sister at all means, moody. To, I was like, your son's normal. If that's what you're saying, he keeps bothering his sister, right? Uh, cracking jokes, walking off away from the family. I said, so hey, so I'm like, I said, eh, eh, where were you going? And they're like, D different like clothes shops. I was like, y your son is normal. That is not satanic. That is nothing. Who in their right mind at the age of 14 wants to go out with mom, grandma, and sister for five, six hours, right? You put him in a position that is intolerable, right? It's intolerable for a long period of time. Oh, that's his mother. That's his grandma. That's, he should love his sister. You don't know what you're saying. This is absolutely normal misbehavior in that circumstance. And she's like, his heart is black. He needs to sit with an imam. We sat down and we talked to him. It's like, you're way off, way in left field. Nothing is wrong here. Zero. Actually, you know what's wrong? This situation. You take a boy out, a youth, a 14-year-old, to be with these three women for five, six, seven, eight hours, 
shopping for women's clothes and household items. I'm an adult, I'd go crazy, right? I would go insane <laughs> if I had to do that, right? So, also the Sharia says, a man will not raise his daughter. If there's a divorce, the, the man never gets his daughter. Either it goes to, it stays with the mom. If she remarries, it goes to the mother-in-law. Why? To avoid any stepdad issues or to avoid, it's not even the stepdad, it's the other sons that may be in the family. Stepbrother issues and stepdad issues. That's what the Sharia is worried, is, is cautious about. So this mata is highly recommended. And now think about this. If you have, if you're a husband, if you're a man, your wife, ex-wife is raising your kids. Naturally, you're paying uh, for the kids uh, rent and food anyway, right? You're paying their tuition, their clothes, their medical bills. You're paying everything anyway. It would make sense. You don't want your wife to, uh, uh, to be poor either. How is she going to be a good mother if she's poor? So, but at the same time, if you're going to implement that element of the Sharia, and it's a recommendation, and you want us all to preach to the people that is highly recommended, willingly, you can't make it a fart, willingly for the man to make sure his ex-wife, mother of his kids, is okay. It, you, you are 100% above board. This is mashru'a in the deen as a recommendation, and we as Muslims will promote it. And the masajid, we always prioritize, in terms of zakat and sadaqah, we always prioritize women with kids. Then it's women without kids, like women whose kids are older, uh, and she doesn't have dependents. Then it's the sick. A healthy man almost hardly ever gets anything for zakat, like maybe 500 bucks to get on your feet, rent a room, and get a job, right? That's it. We hardly, Sheikh Nas is very harsh on them. Like he's very harsh on him. When he sees a grown man, he he looks him and he says, "You got limbs, you got legs, you can hear, you can see. Well, let's go get a job, right?" He hardly gives him zakah. I, this Sharia too. So, um, at the same time, though, you're also taking on a burden that is that is not mashru'a, which is keeping your son with you after bulugh, right? That shouldn't happen. He also decre probably decreases your chances of remarriage. If you're going to mar remarry, some people are in their 40s and 50s and they're remarrying, right? And you, there's a teenage boy in that relationship, in that house, and he's going to be coming living in our house, right? Uh, probably it will be a cause for people to, to put a pause on this, right? So, all right, so that's our first segment on the subject matter of alimony. And, uh, and the need to help uh, mothers